Well, hello and welcome to the Viewfinders Photography Podcast. I'm your host, Graham Dargy, and today my guest is Gregory Escandi, a photographer based in Mozambique, whose unique and vibrant style of street photography has gained him almost 30,000 followers on Instagram. Before we get to Greg, just a quick check-in. When I started the podcast, I had one goal, to talk to some of the best photographers from around the world. I didn't have much more of an idea of what it would be than that, but I did know that it would lead to other things. Something. I didn't know what that would be, but I knew that once I got going, the next thing would reveal itself. A couple of weeks ago, as you might know, I held the first Viewfinders Live with Mark McCall. And since then, the future direction of Viewfinders has really come into focus. So just a note here to say the months ahead look really exciting. And wherever you're at with your photography, I'm so looking forward to educating, entertaining, and inspiring you to improve your photography by bringing you access to some of the best photographers from all over the world through my interviews, events, masterclasses, and more. So stay tuned, because there's lots of exciting stuff coming up in the next few months. Segway, speaking of things that are coming up, Viewfinders Live, an evening with Jim Richardson, is coming up on Monday, the 29th of March, 2021. The Scotland-obsessed 50-time National Geographic photographer will give a brilliant talk about his amazing photography. You can ask Jim anything in the live Q&A and there will be an exclusive prize draw on the night. Tickets are on sale now for just £10 plus booking fee. That's 11 37 in total. For me, getting access to a photographer of Jim's experience, knowledge and reputation for a few pounds is the absolute best money you'll invest in your photography this year. If you want to know more about Jim, check out last week's episode of the podcast and I hope I can see you there on Monday, the 29th of March, 2021. Tickets are available on Eventbrite and the link is in the show notes. I'd like to connect with you and you can find me on Instagram at viewfinderspodcast and check out view-finders.co.uk where you can find other episodes of the show. If you've been enjoying the show, why not subscribe, leave a five-star review and share the show with your photography friends to help get the podcast in front of more of the right people. Okay, I always love when we can take a trip to Africa on the show, and my guest this week is Gregory Escandi, a photographer based in Mozambique. Greg is a teacher who's lived in Africa for 20 years, and he's created a unique style of photography, which he describes as studio in the street. Greg's photography captures the strength and vibrancy of the people of Maputo, the sheer joy of childhood in his shots of kids playing, as well as touching on the hard realities of life in what's widely considered one of the poorest countries in the world. When I first saw Greg's work, I reached out to him immediately and I found Greg to be a really interesting guy who puts a lot of thought into his photography. I hope you enjoy this. Here's my conversation with Gregory Escandi. Hi Greg, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. One of the things I really enjoy about the podcast is I get to speak to some photographers who I've been following for years and years. And with you, it's been a few days. (laughs) And I found your photography, I don't know, five days ago or something, when I messaged you, yeah. Okay. And um, I was just was so taken by it. I've never seen anything like it. And I see a lot of photography, like all of us nowadays. Um, So it's it's really unusual that something really jumps out at me in that way. Mm. So... I was really interested to talk to you. I have a, a big place in my heart for Africa. I think I said to you before, uh, my wife comes from Kenya. And uh, so I, I'm always keen to, to make space for that on the show. Well, looking at your photography, what grabbed me was just the vibrance and authenticity of it. And uh, having been in Kenya, you know, the, the scenes that you capture just have that real realness and authenticity about them that you see everywhere. Um, everywhere. I can't say for everywhere in Africa, but the places I've been. And uh, I, particularly the, the shots of kids, they, to me, they just capture the sheer joy of childhood um, with the kids jumping and playing football. And I love that. Um, Thank you. So, yeah, so I was really, really keen to talk to you. Let me ask you, I was curious, you are not from Mozambique. No, I was, I was born in Spain and uh, I grew up in France. Okay, wow. But I came to Africa 20 years ago. Oh, really? Mm. So I'm living in Africa for 20 years, yes. Okay, wow. Mm. So, and you're a teacher, is that right? Yes, yes, I came for teacher, for teaching, yes. Mm -hmm. And so, where about in France did you grow up? Um, South of France, in the Provence, Luberon. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. In near uh, Avignon. Yeah, and I was in a village, in fact. I think this village really, when I arrived, <laughs> it's funny when you ask this question. Um, <clears throat> when I was seven, I arrived in this village. And uh, this village is the village where uh, Samuel Beckett wrote uh, Waiting for Godot, mm -hmm. the book. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was uh, it was uh, hosted by a family, because he was uh, running away the war. He's from Ireland, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he had this house on the way to my school, and it was a very different house. It was like a northern European kind of architecture, more like English, Irish, and Scottish kind of uh, more Gothic. And he was there, and it was a very funny house i was watching every day when i was passing by and in this village also there's some pigment red pigment that uh, artists love to use for painting and um, an english writer peter mail wrote a book and he mentioned that village so it became a very touristic village but it's absolutely beautiful village uh, <clears throat> painted a lot photographed a lot so i think maybe some kind of my sensitivity also comes from this little village that really inspired mm. me in the artistic way. Mm. So were you artistic when you were at school? Yes, that's what my my uh, my uh, best subject. My When I arrived, I, I, I enjoyed everything. I enjoyed, I enjoyed poetry, I enjoyed the, the language, but I enjoyed also uh, painting with uh, watercolor. And uh, mm. that was uh, my joy. I, I love to draw and paint uh, f since I was very young. So I don't know, it just stayed on me. And now it's, okay. it's, it's on photography, but I also draw and paint a lot. Yeah, I, I used mm. to, not anymore. So were there particular artists that would have uh, influenced you when you were younger or really caught your eye? Any artists that you really followed? First co first comics. <laughs> comics. <Okay. laughs> I loved comics. Uh, a very wide range of comics. And... Uh, and then later on, yes, I just uh, I had uh, fireworks in my eyes, uh, studying at university and uh, learning about the uh, history of art and all periods and photographers and uh, painters, sculptors, uh, primitive art, everything. I was just liking everything I was seeing and understanding the arts and the creation. So I always, I always like that. I mean, there's no a painter in particular or a photographer. It's just like the entire the entire thing that uh, inspired mm. me, in fact. And so when did photography come on your radar? Yeah, good question. So I wanted to do art and I went to do some uh, <clears throat> a University of Art in Aix-en-Provence near Marseille. And I was studying like theory, uh, aesthetics, history of art. Uh, I had a course on photography and various other courses was humanities and I was painting there and um, and to record some installations, some like ephemer art, some things I was I was doing on the street art and then it was disappearing or some project I was doing. I, I needed to to photograph them. So this is when I started to be really interested in photography, just as a way of uh, keeping track of things I was doing. And then I really liked and enjoyed, I was using this film camera at the time, that was in the 90s, and uh, the digital just came at this moment. Like, but it was really like, a, you know, in the 90s, like this shift of technology. I don't really remember when it really started. But at the time, I was going to an antique and buying like secondhand cameras because they were very expensive for me. And I get this one, it's like film camera with like mm. manual and then I was learning and a friend of mine who was passionate about photography had a lab, a dark room. So I was, he taught me how to print my photos mm -hmm. and um, it was fun. I mean, I, I enjoyed that a lot. So I was starting to experiment with photography then. Then I went to Japan in 2000 and uh, I had this uh, film camera and then there was like just explosion of images I could uh, f take as a photography. And then the digital came. And this is where I had a little stop, you know, not knowing what to do. And I was still taking film cameras. And when I was I came in Africa, in Zimbabwe, I was still using a old film camera, old manual. And I did uh, some photos in 2005 in uh, Ilia de Mozambique. 
in uh, Beira, in uh, Gran Hotel da Beira, in Iliaibo, in some places in Mozambique. And this is where I really enjoyed it, the place and uh, the photography, the, all the, the things. And I knew there was, coming, there was something that could come there. And, uh, and then my daughters were born, one in uh, 2006, the other one in 2008. And then I had to record absolutely uh, those little girls growing up. So I said, okay, let me just buy a little digital mm -hmm. camera. I had some few digital camera before, like a Sony Super Shot in 2001, you know, taking some little digital, the beginning. But I didn't have all this. Uh... And funny thing, I was going to Ilia de Mozambique in 2005, year before my first daughter was born and i was using this old minolta with film and a 35 millimeters taking landscape but portraits and uh, in black all mm -hmm. in black and white with the hill fort you know films mm -hmm. and uh, and in ilia there were two journalists from paris match i don't know if you know paris match yeah it's a famous uh, french magazine with uh, people and so on and they were covering all the islands of the world imagine the job you're a photographer, mm. you pay by the magazine to cover all the islands, beautiful mm. uh, hidden germs, uh, highland gems, uh, uh, little mm. islands. And <laughs> Ilia de Mozambique, absolute no tourists, but like so much uh, intense of history and uh, colors and, uh, uh, you know, a mix of um, um, civilizations and, uh, and people. And, you know, it's really a, a very interesting place. Um, to to visit and to see, and and they were taking photo, and then they had this uh, new brand new digital cameras, you know, the mm. one I couldn't afford certainly, but that was like the the, the latest one. But that was in two thousand and five, so I guess now they're very old, kind of. Mm. But there was the the this year like the digital cameras, right? And mm -hmm. I was using this one, and but I followed them. They took me through the island because they were. And I took the same photos that they did, and I'd, I'd never seen their article after that. But then I said, okay, then I bought a little better uh, digital camera to, to photography my daughters. It's a Canon G16. And then I said, okay, uh, now it's time for me to move on. And, uh, and I started making a little bit of money. Uh, so I said, okay, let me buy a, a Nikon because I always wanted a Nikon. In fact, I used the 850, but I used before the 750. You know, with my little digital one, I was still taking photos, a project, and I knew some, something was coming, and I bet it wasn't there yet. And mm. then in 2016 or 17, it like exploded in me. I said, okay, I need to do something now uh, before it's too late. Mm. And, um, and in fact, I, I don't think I have a lot to, it, it doesn't have to do with me. I think it has to do a lot with the place I am living which mm -hmm. is not a place that uh, people are used to because it's it's not very known in fact so i'm taking mm -hmm. photos of things that you know nobody really sees because it's just so common in mozambique mm. but for you for me for other people it's like very different in fact it's a proper culture so i really enjoy it yeah and so that brings you up to starting the this type of photography you're doing now which is on your instagram Hmm. Um, would you? How would you describe that? Would you call it street photography? Yes, mm -hmm. um, I like to call it that way, but it's not strictly street photography. Yeah. Um, and so my friend uh, Christine, a, a art curator, who organized uh, my first uh, solo exhibition, uh, she said that it's mostly can be described as uh, street studio photography. So. You were saying you felt the idea, you sort of described that the ideas came to you. You knew there was an idea out there for something. Can you talk more about that process? So you <clears throat> you saw that I have like different subjects. Mm -hmm. So mostly uh, mothers with uh, babies mm -hmm. and uh, kids. And the only men I have, in fact, are men that are, you know, young and working hard uh, to to sell products in the streets. So uh, the men I have will be always the same, actually, because it seems that the jobs are very um, like uh, reserved to male or female. So, for example, selling uh, Polish um, nail polish, it's a little young man's job. Selling mm -hmm. some uh, cotton candy, it's also a <laughs> man's job. It's mm -hmm. very hard. These guys work walk for 20 kilometers and the sun 
or even more a day uh, mm -hmm. trying to sell these uh, products. And uh, <clears throat> also the guys recycling bottles. Mm -hmm. um, and those are the men. The women mostly are the women either working in the fields, um, carrying babies, carrying goods in their, in their heads, mm -hmm. and, uh, and kids. So those are main three, uh, like uh, human beings uh, of Naputo. And uh, of course, the way I'm taking photo, I guess it's not like very realistic. It has some, I don't know if it's hyper realistic. It's not, it's, I don't know what you feel when you see them. It's, what would you to say it's street photography? It is somehow. Some of them are genuine street photography. They are like mm. people I see passing on the streets. But I always mm. try to present them with respect. And and then some people could say, but who are you to take photo in Africa? I mean, you know, why do you take? I don't know. I had some critics about uh, a very, very uh, relevant. Uh, so the idea didn't come like that very uh, straight away. It took it took. It took a year or two. I said, okay, I have now the best camera, <laughs> one of the best <laughs> camera. I bought the best lenses I could buy. I bought Sigma art lenses. Mm -hmm. They are very expensive. Um, but, you know, I had a little bit of money. I said, okay, let's go for it now. Let me buy the most ma nice material. Now I have no excuse not to make photos. So mm. I'm going to go. I was starting taking the photos first one year with this little G16. And mm -hmm. then I... I say, okay, and I was taking photos and not knowing what to do, uh, going to see people. And that's the beginning of my Instagram. I'm starting like asking people, can I take a photo? And then, you know, I say, okay, I'm seeing this woman. They are so beautiful walking with the babies on the back and so proud. And, you know, they're working hard to, to, to make their li living for their family. And you see them on the street mm. and you're, it's always busy. It's always a... Uh, um, so I see that and I, I cannot take a photo. It's, it's difficult to have all. So it will be very street photography in that case. If I had taken the photo, you would have seen the background, the busy background, the, the, the angle and, and all this. And, and I didn't want, I didn't want that. I wanted to recreate something a little bit more, um, mm. uh, how to say, um, uh, in, 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 like, uh, Im immediate, you know, something, okay, this isn't the subject. So. I, I imagine the studio in the street, like I'm going to take a model mm -hmm. and I'm going to photograph him or her, um, but I'm going to decide what time uh, in the day, what light, uh, what background, um, and, and then I can make tries and, and see, and this is how I started uh, hiring some models. Uh, not, not always, I would say that's about 60, 70%. Mm -hmm. percent of my Instagram, because you see a lot okay. of shots which are completely genuine. They're absolutely not, uh, no, no, uh, almost no mm -hmm. retouching or no retouching. And it's not mm -hmm. a model, it's someone passed by, but um, it, and so the kids also, I'm asking them, I mean, of course, uh, I'm asking them to take photos. So they, mm -hmm. I'm making them doing some, uh, some, some drums, some moves, and I'm taking them. Mm. They are not completely genuine. It's not like I'm assisting a football game and taking yeah. some. No, no, I'm asking them to perform. Yeah, you can see that with the with the shots of the kids because obviously they're you know in front of the wall. It's not like in they're, they're in a football match. But with the with the women, mm. I I wouldn't have known if they were just walking by and you were just w waiting in a particular spot. But mm. that's um, something that you organize usually with the ladies in the shots. Yeah. Usually, yes. Some, um, not always. I mean, you, you can tell me which one, uh, you, which one are, are, are organized and which one are not. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not obvious. Some of them are not mm. organized. And I was so lucky. But you know, I was doing that like, uh, you're looking for the shot and you don't, I don't, I have no time because I'm, a, I'm a full time teacher also. So mm. I'm doing that in the afternoon, four o'clock, beautiful light. Uh, early in the morning, Saturday, Sunday, I'm biking, walking, driving, but you know, it's very time consuming. And, and some, and so I was starting going outside and spending the day outside and not having any shot I liked, but having seen a lot of scenes that I enjoyed and I wanted to recreate. So this is how mm. I started recreating the street. Yeah. One of my questions I have on my list was that about whether being an outsider to the culture allows you to see 
these observations more clearly and you already touched on it when you were yeah. talking earlier yes. but you're seeing things like the, the the with the shots of the of the women with the beautiful fabrics that they wear carrying the child in a and i don't know what they call the fabric locally but we call it here we call it in a um a lesso um well here as in in my household um, you know <laughs> how they carry Kenya. the baby in a in a lesso yeah and with uh, carrying something on their head as well it's it's quite something to see isn't it yeah it's it's uh, it's it's um it's uh, everyday life uh, mm. If you drive from Maputo to to the north, this is where you will see everywhere in Ma in Mozambique. You will see mm. ladies with the goods in their heads, with kids on their back, with uh, uh, dressed with capulana. So that's the local term for this fabric. It's called capulana, and it's like mm. a very uh, it's a uh, it's cultural. It's very uh, all the women have capulana. It's part of the of the main dress for mm. women. And also, men can do shirts with capulana, and and it's but it's coming from India, I would guess. But mm. um, there, yeah, it's it's very present here in Mozambique. I read that the use of that type of fabric originated uh, with the Dutch coming over. It's possible. Yeah, because it's such a distinctly African sight to see that you cannot see that in Europe, and um, as a as an outsider, you can't not notice it because it's it's so amazing, you know. Yes. Yes, it's true. Um, yeah, yeah. And then the the colors and the color of the wall and and the richness of the color of this of the people's skin. I just love it. It stands out to me, and it's so um, it so speaks of everyday life in Africa. I think, and it's such just such beautifully captured images, especially of the women. I think you touched on it as well about shooting them with a with a strength or a dignity. Yes, that's what the term I wanted to mention. I was trying to photograph them and. So they keep their, their dignity absolutely. Even the men, mm. what, whatever thing they're doing, to to mm. uh, to earn their life. I mean, l life is so tough in the Mozambique. You know, uh, I'm French, and we're like a so-called rich country, and uh, and everybody is depressed and pessimistic. In here, mm. they are like in the dire straits, like you cannot imagine. And they're all super nice and positive and uh, optimistic. Yeah, I th well, it makes you wonder if we have our priorities in the right place sometimes. Mm. Um, so let me let's touch on the shots of the kids. Ah, okay. Yeah, I can tell you the process how it came. In fact, because um, I was first taking these ladies. That was my first idea. Um, so usually I was seeing this mom and I was asking them, okay, can you please stop? Can I take a photo of you? And then you have three answers. First one, the lady says, that was before I started to have moms as models. I was, mm. you know, stopped. So I couldn't take them in the nice, like I wanted to take them genuinely, you know, like not posing, like walking. But that's impossible. I mean, you have to be very lucky to have a good shot like that. So I was stopping mm. them and say, okay, can I take a photo? Can you stay here? Can you? Okay, thank you. And then three responses, uh, I don't have money. So they thought I was I was uh, going to ask them for money to take a photo, mm. which is fun. Okay. Or they say nothing. They just say, okay. Sometimes they say, no, they don't want, so I don't take a photo. And um, and then I started doing uh, these ladies uh, passing by and asked them to, to join me. And I had a friend who was um, hiring those moms for me. And, uh, and one day I saw a, a little kid running in between two shots and i shot this little kid was running it was like a a wall was um this you know this slums uh mm -hmm. iron metal panel you know what i'm talking about? I, don't, I don't know the name yeah. in english it's corrugated metal yes and there are a lot of walls you know of uh, little, uh, poor houses covered with that and mm -hmm. that was the background and then the mom was passing by and then there was a little kid a group of little kids are running and I'm shooting and I say, wow, I mean, that's what I want to do. Then the next day mm -hmm. I ask my friend, can you find me some kids? And then I have a lot of friends, kids that are begging some food that uh, um, outside the school I'm working. And I say, OK, I'm going to buy you food, but come and I'm going to take photos of you and you're going to jump for me <laughs> and you're going to mm. show me and do because the shade is beautiful here. Uh, so it's like shade there and like oh you're playing soccer let me take photos and this is how it started in fact yeah okay you've covered a lot of what i was gonna talk about but one thing i was really interested in there's a, a few shots of kids playing football where they're heading the ball mm. do you know what i mean mm -hmm. 
Um, how did did that something that came up spontaneously, or how did that come about? Uh, yeah, maybe you now a group of kids I, I I met, they was asking for money or food. I said, okay, come on the beach and let's do some photos, and they jump, and one of them had a ball, and then I take a shot with him receiving the ball, and that was one of my first shots. I said, oh, I need to reproduce that, uh, mm. because that was uh, the end of the day. Uh, it was on the uh, the background was the sky, and because I've turned it black and bl white, the sky mm -hmm. turned out to be very white. And mm -hmm. the guy was like uh, black with the ball and this, you know, he was receiving the ball. And that, and that was like the first one I did. And I think that's how it came to say, okay, I need to reproduce that. So anytime I saw mm -hmm. kids, especially the kids I see with this very uh, homemade ball with plastic. that, mm -hmm. uh, And once I offered them like as a, you know, retribution for photos, I bought them a very nice uh, ball, but it was gone or stolen or or... Mm -hmm destroyed by the older guys two weeks later <laughs> so, mm. uh, but yeah that's uh, how it came I, i'm not a extremely uh, how, a fan of soccer i do like i do watch but i'm not like the you know the ultimate uh, soccer fan but um mm. i took one of these guys uh, and he had a shirt of the turkish national team uh, wait uh, or istanbul or ankara team i forgot but I, mm -hmm. I didn't even notice that. And then I started having a lot of followers from Turkey. Okay. And because <laughs> one of the platform published one, my photo is like a, like a Turkish platform gallery. And because mm -hmm. they saw that shirt, and then I received a lot of messages, well, Telecom, it's like the shirt of the team of the city. Mm -hmm. So it, it became famous to the point where I had an exhibition in Istanbul. Okay, wow. Mm. I see, I've see. i seen the photos you've been describing on your Instagram feed and anyone listening can go and check those out. Um, there's just something about those shots where the kids are heading the ball and their their expression, you, can, nobody, you can't help but do that when you head a ball. But it started, this started also when I was uh, trying to find some art to do and I, I really enjoyed the, the, to see some images of soccer players, you know, in action like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought it was like a dance, you know, it was like a wild kind of uh, ex dancing expression. And I wanted to reproduce that like artistically taking photos, mm -hmm. but I didn't know how to represent that. And I think and that was like in uh, uh, 2099, like 21 years ago when I was mm -hmm. doing and find my, my art was photography, but also doing some collage. So I was reproducing some, I was, um, doing some collage on my scrapbook. You can see my scrapbook is always here. So mm -hmm. I'm doing this um, painting, collage and stuff like that. And I was I was in Spain and a fan of football in the newspaper. So I was cutting the photograph of the soccer players and put him on the background. Uh, very busy. That was my stuff. So maybe it comes mm -hmm. from there too. I don't know. Like yeah. I, the expression on the face when you have all this tension you want to grab the ball or you're fighting against someone to get the ball. It's very intense. So I, I like to capture that. Mm, it's very intense. And it's a very, you can't control what your face does in mm. those moments, you mm. know, so it's very authentic. I think it's, it's amazing. Port photography, yes, somehow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it's just, it's childhood as well. Do you know what yes. I mean? Because, yes. you know, mm -hmm. um, I think for, for grown-ups, we would try and show some restraint or control things a bit more on a photograph. But those mm. pictures of the kids jumping and playing football, it's, they're just all in, all out. And it's, it's just the joy of childhood. I love it. Okay, let me ask you about another style of photograph that you have on your feed. And it's really different than what we've just been talking about. They're beautiful, low key, studio looking uh, portraits of a woman with like a head scarf on is a color is a color one is the lady and the brown background yeah okay yeah, yeah it's it's so different than the other work that we've been talking about but mm. it's such a strikingly beautiful picture wonderfully done thank you um what can you tell us about those kind of pictures where do they come from Oh, those are our studio pictures, in fact. Mm -hmm. So this one was made at, at home. Okay, so that's a model, in fact. I I met her because she was modeling. 
uh, and I was invited to a photo shoot and uh, Mafalala, which is a, so I met her there and, uh, and uh, I had a contact and I asked her, okay, can I do some photos? And I liked her and I took her twin sister. If you go a little bit earlier on my Instagram, you have her twin mm -hmm. sister and I took both of them. Uh, okay. And she knew how to to do that hair um, hat that she has, so that was what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, it's a composite, so the background is not uh, okay. the real background. In fact, I think uh, I, pu I I put a background that I took in Bilen, which is a little village. Uh, so it's uh, it's really the the wall of a hut of an African hut, you can see the palm tree uh, shades. Mm -hmm. So it's, and then I tried to, I don't know what I did on Photoshop. I'm not very good at that, but I tried to do a color grading that would match the the lady with uh, the background. Mm -hmm. You you wouldn't know it was a, a composite, actually. It's really well done. Yeah, <laughs> thank um, you. I, I'm so no happy because, <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah, there are two images, in fact, in this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I applied some little uh, photoshopping to 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 obtain that result. There are some shots where <laughs> there's a there's a baby and they seem to be behind a, a glass uh, or a window maybe it's got some water mm -hmm. on it. Um <laughs> there's so <laughs> they just mm -hmm. make you smile but they're I don't know they're really engaging pictures. Um, so there's the baby seems to be pressed mm. right up against the glass and there's water. How do you <laughs> how, how does that come up? Yes, it came with uh, with uh, by chance. In fact, it was not planned. Uh, the first one was Isa. Isa is the baby, the first one black and white on the window. And this photo is one mm -hmm. of the most popular photo I took, I think, uh, on Instagram it was uh, taken by so many galleries, 20, 30,000 like and uh, 5,000 mm -hmm. followers in one week when after, and, and you go into the the tag photo, it's one of the most tagged. It's like I have like walls and walls mm -hmm. and walls of my Instagram tagged with that photo. It was amazing. And it, it was completely uh, by chance because there's a model that happens to be the lady that brings me, that finds me some mom has found the, has found me a mom and as she said I want you to take photos of me too so I said okay let's go to the studio with the mom and for a change I'll take photo of the mom in the studio not in the street and uh, and the baby was there and mm -hmm. I said okay let's try that with the mirror because I follow a course on uh, uh, at Rama TV. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if you know. Yeah. <laughs> There's a guy in Hoi. Yeah, everybody knows him. <laughs> I'm an absolute fan of this guy. And he does uh, one of the the um, course on, uh, you know, putting a window and, and putting some water, spray with some water, mm -hmm. and then putting a, like a double exposure to and, and, and put some Gaussian blur so that the, it's, it looks like a, a reflection on the window. It looks mm -hmm. like it's done outside on the on the you know where where it wasn't is in the studio so I, I tried to recreate that but i didn't put the i finally didn't put the double exposure i just left it like that I thought it was fun and she made that expression <laughs> <laughs> i didn't realize that at first i mean it was when i load them into the computer and look at it i said oh that's so funny mm. but the real photo is not like that it's like color of course and it's you see her full body she's holded by the mom and uh, she comes closer and um, with my 24 millimeters. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like portraits with 24 millimeters are, mm -hmm. like, are, are like landscape portraits. The, the face is a landscape. Yeah. That's what I like about 24 millimeters. Mm. Um, and so it, it, this photo was um, really success. So I tried to reproduce that again. I said, okay, I made once. So I made another kid like that. One more. And uh, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And then one more. So I made a few of them. I like, then there's two photos of Isa from the same session. Um, and now I have my friend that is showing me the moms around that has a baby and is very cute. And I want to to invite the mom and the baby to take some photos. Mm. It's... Yeah, I took I took babies because it's very popular on Instagram. I'm trying to. <laughs> 
and I know that woman loves babies, yeah. and they are my my biggest followers. Sixty, seventy percent, sixty percent are ladies. So I'm trying to please them with babies. I see. <laughs> it's it's an amazing uh, expression, though, and the the eyes on this baby are huge. Um, yeah, it's difficult. It's it's not as easy to. I met some I never published because they were not uh, successful. Mm, I'm sure it's a baby. I mean, it's a person. You have to to have some interaction, and it, sometimes it doesn't work. If you reach into your photography bag, what comes out? What's the camera and the lens that you bring out? D850 with a 35 millimeters. Mm -hmm. And that's the, um, the Sigma 35 millimeters. Sigma R35, Sigma R24. Mm -hmm. And I used to have a Sigma R85 that I broke. You... <laughs> and I, uh, you know what? I broke it. And it costs one thousand mm -hmm. dollars. I don't want to be rude, but uh, you imagine the word I would I would I say then, mm -hmm. and I'm still saying. And I tried <laughs> to fix it; didn't work out. Uh, so I bought a second-hand Nikon um, 85 millimeters mm -hmm. that opens at 1.8 because it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but it's okay. That's that's my lens for now. I'm using for 85. It's this Nikon, and I have a 70 to 100 Tamron. Mm -hmm that I use very less frequently, only when I shoot, uh, trying to shoot flamingos. Okay. That's where, where I bought it. I used it for portraits, but I prefer the 85 now. And um, so mostly 85 and 35 for the ladies, mm -hmm. the moms. And mostly, uh, now and then for the kids, it can be 24, it can be 85, I think. And for the kids close up, 24 and uh and some portraits are 24 and the kids jumping at 24 yeah what does the 24 give you i mean why would you choose that for that shot 24 is when it's like uh yeah i'm close to the portrait it's like uh the, uh, the action is taking place around me and mm. that's really fun um and then I say, okay, can you do that? And boom, it does it. You tune, tune, and everyone is competing, is 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 enjoying because I'm asking them to do things they like to do: jump mm -hmm. on the water or or jump on the ball and and do some acrobatic figures. And and some of them are jumping very high, so I'm taking different angles to try to shoot them. And the 24 is nice because when you have the kid in ahead of you, he's jumping on a tire, and he goes and he's right right in, at, above you. And uh, you have to have a 24 millimeters because mm -hmm. you want the entire kid, um, the entire person. And that's why I use a 24 millimeters. And I like 24 millimeters and 85 for some, some other options. It's a co totally different experience using the, the 85 or the 24 though. So I can imagine it, it might change how you do it. It's just a, changing the distance. Yeah. The distance you're placed. Um, if we go from there to the studio type of shots, you're using, are you mm. using flashes for those? Yeah. Yes. Three Pro Photo B2. No, I'm kidding. I have some Godox flashes. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> the very cheap one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I, the reason I didn't flinch because everybody who I talk to says they use Profoto. And so I wouldn't have been surprised at all. <laughs> I wish I could use Profoto. So after your podcast, maybe uh, I will afford some Profoto. I really <laughs> want to have the A1 flash, but um, I'm still thinking. Mm, everybody is t saying good things about the B10, but it's... The B10. It's, yeah, it's a lot of money, but... But now I'm, I'm happy with what I have, but I... I I feel the limitation a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, but my my word would be uh, I'm I'm not changing material until I really see the limit. It's not because I have a Godox that uh, I I can do some photos that are okay. I mean, probably the light is much easier to use with uh, Profoto, more reliable. Uh, probably the light is also quality is probably better. I don't know, but I would I would love I would love to rent it. Uh, but I have to live to be in Europe for that. Yeah. And then try this material. So with the Godox, what, which model is that? It's, if you don't uh, mind me uh, asking. It's just a uh, lamp, uh, 300 uh, power is 300. Uh, there are three lamps. It was very cheap uh, okay. suitcase, suitcase that I could carry back to Africa mm. uh, with uh, three lamps, 
uh, modifiers. Then I bought some other modifiers as I was. Uh, uh, so I just bought like a big um, softbox with a grid mm -hmm. and a bigger one, and then uh, and then I'm us most using like a three softbox. I would love to have a octagonal and bigger one, and I'm dreaming when I see these tutorials or these uh, movies uh, with this photographer studio showing this this material. I'm just like to me, it's like I'm just like a kid, you know, mm. uh, in the in the toy shop. But now I'm just have this like basic material, but I mean, it gives me a light. Mm. So if you have that small gridded softbox, though, you have a lot of control with that light, more control mm -hmm. than you have with the big octa. So mm -hmm. I'm, I have the I've got a big octa and I'm, I use this, this really small. I think it's a Godox pop up umbrella with a mm -hmm. grid on it. I use it all the time and it's it's I swear by it. They're really good. They're very robust as well. But yeah, so that would be is it the AD 300? I only know that because I was looking at Godox lights a few days ago. Well, I forgot. Uh, I have to go. It's not here. I'm using as to I, I'm using to do I did corporates recently mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed my setup to do a corporate portrait. Mm -hmm. It's very nice and Pepsi, and, and I I use a white background. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I use their wall. It was white, and then because of the lamps, it becomes a little bit grayish. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it's neutral, and that's what they wanted anyway. They wanted gray, and um, and uh, yeah, it, it it does the job. I mean, even if it's Godox, I, I like to do also. I saw you were doing landscape photography, and that's mm -hmm. something I really admire uh, because you need to know. To me, landscape photography it's the like the summum of photography because you you do the real job. You're going outside and you're looking for the best possible view and light. And you need. To, I mean, it's the time you spend looking for the shot because you you have to walk. You have to discover places. It's like the adventure. It's mm -hmm. the not the shot itself is how you, everything you did to to find this mm -hmm. this shot and I love to do night photography as well mm -hmm. and that's something I tried I never published my night photography shots but I do have I don't know you you probably do that are you talking uh, about like with the stars milky yes and with the foreground mm -hmm. that's something I really enjoy but I don't have time to do that but uh, that's part of the landscape photography that. Mm -hmm. uh, I might move into later if I go to Europe, for example. Okay, let's go to a round which I call uh, double exposure. And I wanted to ask you about a particular shot from your feed. And then you can tell me about one that maybe has a good story behind it or brought you, brought mm -hmm. you to a, a, a good adventure or something. I'm going to ask you about, there was a few that I had written down, but... I'd wanted to see which how the conversation went, but there's a shot here of a boy and his face is covered in sand. Uh, I haven't seen that before. I've never seen anything like that before. No, no I've never seen that. What can you tell us about the story behind uh, that shot? I copy it from someone else. <laughs> <laughs> I've probably seen that somewhere and I asked the kids to do that, to perform that. Mm. I say, oh, you, I saw them also maybe uh, with that and, and I, I asked them... Uh, can you put some water in your face from the sea and then put your head and they did it. And I have <laughs> plenty of guys. I just took one. I just mean uh, publish one, but I have a series of these guys. They're all fun. And this mm. one was really fun. Yeah, but I've seen that a lot. Uh, I did. Okay. I'm going to talk about one of my favorite Instagram photographers mm -hmm. is uh, Ali Jeb. And I think he, I copied him. In fact, he, I think he has photos also. And I've seen that in Instagram a lot kids with like uh, sand on their face hmm. so if you look at Ali Jeb I don't know if you're in his page I think so he's got dark low-key portraits yes absolutely that's the guy and he's, he must have some of them with kids with sand okay so you just copied <laughs> yeah art is about that I mean Picasso copied African art mm. full stop he copied everything painters from the Renaissance they copy their master they just imitate mm. Uh, art is just a continuation. Like it's like uh, in, you know, we all influence. We all uh, copying ideas from each other. So <laughs> I don't see any bad things about taking yeah. from someone else's idea and just do like something a bit different, maybe. Yeah, I'm I'm all in for that. That's no problem for me. Was there a moment or a photo that you took that just 
has a great story behind it or it just moved things forward for you or took you to an unexpected place in your photography? Wow, this question. Uh, yeah, maybe I would say the first one. And this is the one that moved me. Uh, if you go to the beginning of my Instagram, it's on December 27th, 2017. It's one of the first photos of my Instagram. Uh, you see a kid with a red cape. Do you, do you have it in, in, under your eyes? Yeah, I do. Can you describe the shot so the listeners can so find it? So it's three kids on the kind of a wooden uh, shop, very small shop that is... Uh, going towards a little bit like the Peace Tower, a little bit mm. falling down. Mm -hmm. And there's a sky gray, but it's very badly edited. But because it was very badly taken, because I'm a very poor photographer in terms of technique, uh, so uh, so you can see the default on the photo. Um, I improved uh, some aspects of my photography, but that was the time I didn't know how to focus and how to um, be faster knowing my machine and knowing what to do with it. So that's why it's not very well uh, in terms of aspect, but the subject is strong. You, I think it has some impact. Mm. So I was walking, taking photos of uh, people uh, looking for crabs or shells in the sea that you can see a little bit on my Instagram. In the beginning, it's fishermen and just uh, the beach trying to find s subjects. That's the time I didn't know what to shoot people that's why i want to shoot i want to shoot people life here landscape like marine boats i didn't know and i was walking towards the the fisherman village where i could see those fishermen and boats and i come and i see one of these kids the one with the red uh, fabric mm -hmm. which is dojeme which is the beer the, the one of the famous beer in mozambique mm. Doze dojeme he comes and he, he was there inside this little house you see this little and this is where they used to sell and cook chicken in mm -hmm. the days where there was no pandemic there are a lot of these ladies cooking chicken and drinking and selling drinks so they were they slept there because i was trying to get the sunset sun sorry sunrise so it was like 5 30 in the morning mm -hmm. um, and then i see this guy appearing coming i saw his head coming in, and i passed by and he stays in my mind and i'm walking and i said what are, what am i doing i came here to take photography mm. come back and take this kid i was with my 35 millimeters and then by the time i came back there was another one that just came out and then i'm starting trying to get a photo and i i completely missed the focus i completely missed the exposure and everything is bad but by the time there's a third guy coming, I said they were all sleeping there during the night, all these three kids. Um, so that, that's it. I took this photo and uh, and I wanted to take those kids a little bit more later. It's a, it is a really strong image. And so they, these kids slept in there and that's just by the side of the road. Is that right? Yes. Mm. And a friend is the ocean in mm. front. There's the beach. That's, oh, that's the, the beach. Okay. Mm behind them yes yeah that's the bitch yeah so it's again it's one of those things that is so common to see in africa um but it, it's such a, a powerful thought to think that those three little kids were sleeping in there so it moved me yeah it moved me it, uh, yeah it's very moving. kids are like uh, really strong they're living the life it's tough yeah it's tough no it's tough um you get these a lot of street kids in maputo mm. i know you get them in kenya a lot Mm. Okay, thanks for sharing that. This is a quick fire round, so I'm going to ask you a few quick questions and you have to answer fast too. So, <laughs> um, okay, number one, wide angle or telephoto? Wide angle. Uh, head or heart? And <laughs> in bit, no, uh, guts. <laughs> guts, okay, that's a good answer. Do you have a favorite um, Mozambique band or musician? I, I love South African musicians. I would say uh, Hugh Masekela. Hugh Masekela is a trumpeter. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's an African singer. And he, he, he ran away in the States during apartheid, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and he died recently. I saw him live uh, the year before he died. And uh, I mean, watch him and watch his, listen to his music. It's uh, really powerful. That's what I like. I like... Uh, some African band from the 70s in Ghana. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
in jazz and funk and east coast west coast jazz uh, uh modern jazz uh everything yeah some stuff like that cool okay I've, I've looked that up i'll put the link in the show notes what was the last great book movie tv series or a music album that you experienced les miserables from victor hugo <laughs> ah okay and i read it <laughs> Um, would you use an expensive lens cloth or just the corner of your shirt? The corner of my shirt. <laughs> I'm saying okay. very, I'm, I'm not proud of it. <laughs> it's okay. No, 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 actually, no, I have a lens cloth that I use. Yeah. But uh, I don't clean my lens very much often. Do you have a favorite photographer just now? Jan Arbus. Mm. That's my favorite photographer. It's Jan Arbus. You okay, know her? good answer. Yeah, I do, yeah. Dan Arbus, Nan Goldin, and uh, Cindy Sherman. So those are the three girls that I really okay. love. Good. Okay, I love it. Um, and 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 uh, I I recently rediscovered because I I studied him at university and then I, I saw an exhibition last two years ago. Is Duane Mikkels. So Duane Mikkels is not a photographer. He's an artist, but he uses photography as a medium, and is a uh, way beyond everybody else in photography. I think he's, he's on top there. And he's still alive. I mean, he, I really like his photography. You know him? No, I haven't heard of Duane him. Duane Mikkels. So please check. And and it's, it's so rich. And he uses text in photography. And uh, and that's the head, but also the everywhere in the body, not just the head. Okay. Okay. We'll check it out. Link in the show mm -hmm, notes. Mm -hmm. um, when do you feel at peace with the universe? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Never. <laughs> That's my problem. <laughs> okay. So, um, what's it, where do you see your photography going in the next couple of years? More of the same, or have you got some new ideas coming down? That's a question because uh, it, it all depends on the, where I'm going. So it's a lot mm. to do with Mozambique because that's my Instagram name, Photo in Moz, and uh, and then. I don't know. I'm saying if I'm have to, have to to work and travel into Turkey next year, of course I'm going to be influenced by my environment, and this is it. I'm going to do completely different things. Maybe architecture, maybe portraits. Maybe I'm going to only do studio photography with models and go into something completely different. My dream would be to recreate some uh, of the paintings from, you know, Caravage kind of painter, like Baroque, uh, Renaissance uh, painters mm -hmm. with very like, uh, and the, the using themes of the Bible or the mythology. And, you know, why not? I don't know. It's, it, life is so short and I want to do so many things, but uh, I'm so lazy. Uh, so I don't know, <laughs> I maybe do something completely different or, you know, exploring more about what I'm doing right now. I don't know if there's something... It's maybe kind of repetitive now. I don't know if it's going to change. So, but you're open-minded to what comes your way. I love landscape photography and I admire those like you do landscape photography because this is a very technical, very demanding uh, way of photography and, it, and it's not something you improvise. It's something really like a process and, and that's something I'm very much like to do and so yeah, that's maybe something I will explore more like landscape mm -hmm. photography. It's a really different discipline than you're used to, I suppose. It's yeah, it's completely different, in fact, because you mm. know I'm I'm torn in between two worlds. In fact, uh, part of me wants the nature, the the landscape. Uh, it's and another part wants the vibrance of the youth and the fashion and the colors and uh, something more hip hop, if you or more you know um, with people. So it's it's a different thing. I don't know. Um, okay, so people can go to Instagram and find you at Photo in Moz. And I'm going to thank you, Greg, for coming on. I really appreciate your time and um, just talking um, and, and such detail about what you do. It's really, really appreciated. I'm sure people are going to get a lot out of that. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Follow Greg on Instagram at photo underscore in underscore Moz link and links to everything else we spoke about are in the show notes. If you like this episode, you might also enjoy my conversation with Trevor Cole. That's season two, episode three. Thanks for spending this time with me. Enjoy your photography. I'll see you out there. <laughs>